Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where experts in the field inform, educate and inspire their community to be healthier, more balanced and live the lifestyle they love. Our first guest today, Michelle Wolf, is a naturopath, author and lecturer, and the topic we'll be discussing is constipation and other digestive health issues. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Megan. So, Michelle, constipation is a very common problem. Could you describe the cause of constipation? Yeah, sure. There are several causes which are lifestyle causes because of the modern day uh, lifestyle. The number one cause is a lack of water. So if you are somebody that has a very active lifestyle and you perspire a lot or you go in saunas, um, you're going to need more water than someone else. But the amount of water you need is also based on your body weight. It's also based on how much salt you have in your diet as well. But on average, if you times your body weight in kilograms by 33, you'll get the amount of mils of water that you should have. And best to have that water warm rather than cold, it hydrates better. So that would be the number one. The second would be lack of fiber in the diet. So a lot of us have, um, junk food, more white products in the diet, more refined food, white rice rather than brown rice um, and so on. So increasing your fiber through whole foods. So that would be more green leafy vegetables, uh, whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat. If you're someone that tolerates wheat, brown bread rather than white bread. Um, and if there's still constipation, you can have fibers that are even more effective than that. So for example, one tablespoon of chia seeds a day and or a teaspoon of ground flax seeds or LSA a day. And the highest fiber out of any fruit is actually figs. And figs also contain a lot of calcium. So one to two uh, figs a day can correct the problem. Um, a breakfast that I would commonly prescribe is oat bran, which is very fibrous, mixed with hot water with some uh, figs and some chia seeds and some LSA and that's a really, really good fibre to get the bowel moving. Um, if it's not resolved by that, then, let, then look at exercise. So we've become very sedentary in our lifestyle compared to how much we're supposed to move and the body needs to move in order for the bowel to move. Um, if you haven't got a certain period of time for normal exercise, then you can invest in like a small trampoline or a, a lymphasizer, it's often called. Bounce up and down while you're watching television. That's really good exercise for the gut. And the other thing I would say is that we're actually not designed to sit on the toilets in the position that we sit in. So in countries like uh, Asia and in France, a lot of the toilets are holes in the ground and the bottom part of your bowel opens right up when you're squatting. Um, so we have, there are several companies that have squatting stools that go around toilets that can make a considerable uh, difference to constipation and easy passage um, from the bowel. The, after that, the next most important thing would be probiotics. So uh, probiotics are often known as um, bifidus and lactobacillus as the main ones, but there are over 700 recorded species now. Um, and they come from foods like plain yogurt. There's a Balkan drink called kefir, which has huge amounts of uh, probiotics that's readily available in health food shops, or you can make it yourself. And having foods like uh, sauerkraut, so fermented cabbage as an example, small amounts with, with the meals. If you've addressed all of those and there's still constipation, then have a look at your stress levels. So that can have a big impact on the bowel with the mind gut connection. So if you're holding on to emotions, often the bowel can hold on and you can be constipated. If you've got a lot of worry that's going over a period of time, that can often hold on the bowel. So there are specific lifestyle techniques that you can do to release that stress. If it's more complicated, you might want to see a, a professional counsellor or psychotherapist to help release that. Um, and I would use specific herbs for the uh, gut brain connection and to relax 
the gut and calm the, the mind. So stress has quite a big impact and quite a big impact. There can be more serious illnesses like hypothyroid that can cause. What problems does constipation cause to the body? So it, it can cause a lot of very uncomfortable symptoms. Bloating is a big one, which can be really uncomfortable for people. Sometimes it causes um, excessive gas. Uh, it causes a sluggishness, particularly in the brain, from the endotoxins going around in the body and the body just not being cleared and the pressure on the body. If you're very constipated, it also causes a lot of pressure on the heart um, and it can make you feel quite unhappy and quite down if it, if it goes on, both from the uncomfortable feeling and the toxins not being passed. So you've got um, an unhealthy fermentation that goes on in the gut. So, you know, every 24 to 48 hours, a food should be moving out of the gut. It's like a rubbish bin that needs to be moved out, not um, causing recirculating uh, toxins and mind problems. It can also ca cause problems with sleep. So some people wake up in the night because their gut is uncomfortable. Um, with some people it can cause um, swoll swollen glands because the fluids are just not moving through the body. Uh, and you'd be more prone to, like if you're somebody that suffers with eczema for example, it will be worse when you're constipated because the, again, because the toxins are not free flowing out of the body. Do you have any tips for our viewers for some healthy eating? Yeah, so there's lots of tips for healthy eating as far as constipation goes. So having enough fiber is very important. So always have your whole grain. So brown rice instead of uh, white rice, every grain you have, have a whole grain. Green leafy vegetables. Your one tablespoon of chia seeds a day can be amazing. Uh, a teaspoon of ground flax seeds a day one to two figs a day, all these things move the bowel. And then have something in the diet that's got some culture in it that helps those good probiotics and those good prebiotics. So plain yogurt or kefir, which is actually a Balkan drink that has many times more good flora and fauna than uh, plain yogurt. That's readily available from a health food shop and it's spelled K-E-F-I-R uh, and, and avoiding white foods and avoiding uh, junk foods, avoiding fizzy drinks and uh, drinks with colourings in, that all will help the gut and will help constipation. Fantastic information, Michelle. If you'd like to know more about constipation and other digestive issues and Michelle Wolf, please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeinginlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we have another interesting guest with another interesting topic. After the break, lymphologist Sean Connell is talking about ways to improve your immune system, so stay tuned. Welcome back, and next we have Sean Connell back with us, who's a lymphologist, and today he's talking about the immune system. So welcome back, Sean. Thank you. And uh, the immune system today. So can you tell us more about that? Okay, so our immune system is our white blood cells. So our immune system actually starts at our coccyx bone. Our coccyx bone vibrates and that pumps our bone marrow. And then all the, the bone marrow make the white blood cells and the white blood cells get sent to our thymus gland right in the middle of the chest. Uh, to make the T-cells, killer T-cells, and all the things that will run around and clean up all the viruses and bacteria and the unwanted um, things in our body that uh, are upsetting our immune system. So a lot of people rub Vicks on their chest and they think it's for the smell, but it's not. It's for the thymus gland, which is your immune system. Can you tell us a bit more about how the immune system works? Okay. So when we have inflammation in the body, there's no oxygen. Now the challenge with that is the white blood cells need oxygen to run around and clean up all the cancer, the viruses and the bacteria, the things that aren't supposed to be there. So when we have inflammation in the body, the immune system's not working in that area. So what your cells will actually do is because there's no oxygen, the cell is technically off because it needs oxygen to work. 
So what the cell will do is go into spontaneous firing, creating heat. So it will use heat to try and kill the bacteria, the viruses and the cancer that's not supposed to be there. So this is why your body gets a fever. So every degree that you increase the temperature in your body is doubling your immune system. So it's doubling the white blood cells to get into that area and clean up all the unwanted bacteria, viruses and the germs that are not meant to be there. We have germs and parasites and things in our bodies all the time, is that correct? That's right. Uh, we have to live in harmony with those. So when they uh, get out of balance, our immune system will just go in there and, and clean that up. Also, a lot of people don't realise that we have a million bugs in us. So a lot of Lyme's disease out there at the moment, people suffering. So when there's lack of oxygen, um, those bugs wake up. So the oxygen keeps them asleep. So when they wake up, they're hungry. So they want to eat. So they actually start to eat us. And that's where all the, the challenges come from. So increase that oxygen, that'll put the bugs back to sleep, that'll boost your immune system back up, and everything's back to normal. So Sean, when you talk about the oxygen and the, and the white cells, how can we increase our, the oxygen in our body? Well, the oxygen's coming from the bloodstream. And uh, so when there's inflammation in the body, there's no oxygen in that area. So the only way to remove that inflammation is through the lymphatic system. So we have to remove that inflammation uh, out of the body. Uh, then the oxygen can uh, get to the cells and then the white blood cells can clean everything up and our metabolism will can turn on, which creates the energy. And this is why health is energy. And you talked before, I know about those four, the four different ways of increasing oxygen in, can, is that correct? So yeah, there's four ways to activate the lymphatic system. So deep breathing, bouncing, stroking and energy. So when the lymphatic system's moving, uh, that'll move the inflammation and dead cells, toxins away from the cells. And then the, more oxygen can get to the cells. So when there's more oxygen around the cells, the white blood cells can work and they'll just go around and clean up all the cancer, the viruses, the bacteria, the things that aren't supposed to be there. So Sean, for what would your, today, your best advice for our viewers to be around the immune system? Well, we must keep the lymphatic system moving uh, to remove that inflammation out of the body so we can get more oxygen into the cells. So when there's more oxygen there, the white blood cells can go around and clean everything up. Also, our stomach acid is so, so, so important. Um, so we need the proper, proper uh, stomach acid so we can have a proper immune system. Uh, also, there's a gene that we work with, the MTHFR gene. So if that's not working properly, uh, which 50% of the population around the world have a dysfunction with this gene, so this gene helps make the T cells and natural killer T cells that help clean up our body as well. Uh, vitamins are uh, very, very important. So vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin D3. Um, we must keep on top of that with good nutrition. So, and also health is energy. So the more energy we have, the more health we have. And then the body can regenerate and work the way it's supposed to. And we have a lot of new technology out there that really, really helps the body to increase that energy and remove that inflammation and allow the body to regenerate and heal itself. So yeah, and there's a lot of professionals out there now uh, specialising in the lymphatic drainage and energy and how the body works and what we can do to make the body more healthy and regenerate and, and have a better life. And as you said before, bring better balance. Balance, yeah, <laughs> balance. Thanks so much for that, Sean. And for more information about Sean Connell and the immune system, then please go to his webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And we'll go to break and see you back afterwards with another wonderful guest. After the break, the integrative health and wellness expert, Dr. Zara Chelik, is talking about detoxing your life. Stay tuned.
Welcome back and we have Dr. Zara Chelik back with us today, our integrative health and wellness expert, and she's talking to us about detoxing your life. So Dr. Zara, what is detoxing your life? Absolutely. So usually when we talk about detoxing life, people usually associate detoxification with a juice cleanse or a fasting experience that may try in their own uh, daily lives. Uh, but it is more than that. Um, when, when I talk about detoxing life, I'm referring to being mindful at mind, body, spiritual, environmental level and even more. Because what we think, our thought process, what we say um, is also contributing to how we feel and also plays a role also what energy we create and radiate out in our environment uh, within ourselves and also in our workspace and with our loved ones. And of course, there's the detoxification uh, of the physical body, which is, you know, detoxing uh, and giving a break to your organs. Um, and, you know, again, when it comes to detoxing at physical level, it is by individual. So I will encourage people to see what suits their needs. Um, and to work on detoxing the physical body at that level. But having said that though, our body, our organs are always detoxing for us, but it is important that we support our detoxification organs. And you know, some of the organs that are involved in detoxification is our liver, our gut health, our gut itself, the digestive uh, tract, um, our skin, uh, you know, skin pores, if they're open with sweating and through the sweating, we are also detoxing. So body is very intelligent at it, what it does uh, on its own. But it is, you know, it is uh, a great idea, uh, you know, something that I suggest people to really clean the skin clean, um, the skin pores are clean. So then the body is detoxing efficiently through the skin pores as well. It is also a good idea to pay attention how your digestive health is performing, like we did in our last interview, uh, as well as you know how the liver is doing. Uh, and also, are we having the right foods to take the load off the liver? Because liver loaders uh, could be such as you know uh, alcohol uh, or uh, deep fatty fried foods. They can sort of add burden to the liver, which means the detoxification can become sluggish because liver is involved in uh, physical detoxification process. And there is, of course, the lymphatic system when it comes to detoxing at the physical level. Uh, and the lymphatic system uh, can need a bit of that, you know, boost time to time. So getting a nice regular lymphatic drainage massage can also help and support the lymphatic system as well as the physical detoxification system as well. Uh, and there's, of course, the environment. Um, the environment that we work in, the environment that we live in, uh, and we pay attention to, do we have enough greens in our environment to really help detox the air? Do we open our windows regularly to detox and clean the environment that we live in? Cosmetic products, personal care products come into, uh, you know, play a role when it comes to detoxing uh, our lives at environmental level. Uh, so the perfume that we put on, um, shampoos, deodorants, things like that, do they contain uh, you know, certain ingredients? They can disrupt our endocrine system. It can put a burden on the hormones and create that you know, internal imbalance in the hormonal health. So that, you know, those, are the, um, those will be the things that I will recommend people to pay attention when it comes to detoxing environment. Uh, as well as our clinic products at home, in our kitchen, for our bathrooms, uh, they could contain, you know, um, toxins, uh, even though we think that we're actually cleaning, you know, it can actually then back, backfire on us uh, as through the inhalation and through contact with the skin as well. But I always encourage, which is the big one, is to really pay attention to the mind, our thought process, uh, not to hold resentment and to clear that, to balance the mind, and also um, not to judge, criticize, including ourselves, as well as um, not to be infatuate with others. So uh, that the whole thing can create imbalance in, in the mind and also in the individual as well. When you say infatuated with others, can you clarify, give us a little bit of clarity on that? Absolutely, so it's like, you know, you, you like someone so very much, you only see one side of them and you just admire that one side of them so well, so much that you instantly wanna become that individual. 
you want to live like that individual um, and then that makes you not authentic because you're not living your authentic self you're not being your authentic self and that can create imbalance in the mind and put us more in the imminent mind and the um, the transcendent mind can become imbalanced with the you know in relation to our you know um, imminent mind so we want a good balance there and to you know really as much as we can to balance the mind to operate from that um, transcendent mind that creative mind uh, that authentic objective mind so Zara what would you say would be your tip your top tip for our audience to take with them today absolutely so paying attention to mind body our thought process our nutrition our environment is very crucial uh, when it comes to, you know, I just want to add in the nutrition because I didn't say too much on that one. Uh, it is important that we take care of our liver and our gut. My favorite one is actually beetroot juice or beetroot salad um, and also raw aloe vera. Uh, I consume that particularly personally myself. So the beetroot really helps to support the gut health, you know, to move flush toxins out as well as taking care of the liver. So um, the other thing will be pay attention to our clinic products at home. Be very mindful of what our clinic products can actually create internally in our environment and also what effect it can have on the external environment for the other livings in the ocean as well. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And for more information on Dr. Zara Chelik, and detoxing your life, then please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Now we'll finish up for today and we'll see you back next week with interesting guests and topics. If you'd like to know more about our show, please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel.